Crews in Fair Oaks Ranch fighting more than just flames this morning. Our Katrina Weber explains what other challenges these firefighters had to overcome. The Supreme Court is wrapping up its first all virtual term with a major ruling on voting rights. This noon, we have the tales on the decision. Live from KZ 12, the news at noon starts right now. And new and new, no one was home, but fire found a way inside the garage of a home in Fair Oaks Ranch. The flames and smoke this morning causing quite a bit of damage. This was in a subdivision off Fair Oaks Parkway. As Katrina Weber reports, the fire was only part of the challenge for firefighters. Where there had been walls, there is now a black hole, the remains of a garage. The firefighters arrived before 9 this morning. There were fast-moving flames in that space at Northview Pass and Oakview Bend. And they had to work fast too. They made a quick attack to the uh, garage, stopped it in a the garage. There was no extension into the main house on the attached garage. There also was no one home at the time. However, there was smoke that spread into it, as well as a bit of damage to the roof of the home. Although investigators are still trying to find out what caused the fire, they believe they know where to look for clues. There was a, a car inside there, I think it was a Saab, and it was, it was heavy fire from that. Both the car and the garage were destroyed. This fire clearly had a head start on firefighters, but they say that wasn't their biggest challenge. They say just being able to talk about the fire was a big problem. The only problem we did have was communications. We could not get out here to dead spots, which has been a problem out here for, for years. Chief Robert Hardenstein says the spotty radio communication created a dangerous situation for fire crews. They cannot hear you. Most of them come back out. We have to wait for face-to-face uh, -to, -face to find out what, exactly what's going on. It's a recipe for trouble, he says, that could lead to an unnecessary loss of property and even lives. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Also new this noon, fire crews in San Antonio had to battle flames on the west side this morning. Crews were called out to the intersection of Calle Street and South Calavera Street, not too far from South Zarzamora. Firefighters say the building is abandoned there. No one was hurt. When they went inside, they discovered someone set trash on fire. Arson investigators now looking into this. Meantime, a shooting and a crash. That's what led police to the northwest side of town. They tell us a driver shot at a home and then crashed into another house. This happened in the 9000 block of Wellwood near Calabra Road. Police say the driver fired bullets at a home and crashed while then trying to get away from that scene. We're told the suspect hit a fence and broke some bricks as well as a window on a house. The driver got away, but they did leave behind a bumper and some bullet casings. No one here was hurt. A major decision on voting rights from the Supreme Court. The high court upheld new voting restrictions out of Arizona. As ABC's Alex Perche reports, the court said those new state laws are constitutional. Today, a major decision on voting rights. The Supreme Court ruling six to three to uphold Arizona's new voting rights restrictions. These measures are designed to provide order and uh, secure the elections and provide confidence in the results. The case stems from two state laws out of Arizona. Republicans there are trying to limit how ballots are cast. One measure requires election officials to throw out votes in the wrong precinct. Another bans the practice of third party ballot collection or allowing someone else to turn in your absentee ballot for you. To us, it's a fundamental issue of right versus wrong. It's all about the integrity. Democrats and voting rights advocates argued these restrictions violate Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act, which says laws which result in the denial or abridgment of the right of any citizen in the U.S. to vote on account of race or color are illegal. Opponents of the laws say the real purpose of these new restrictions is to make it harder for minorities to vote. If people have less access to mail, then in fact, getting that ballot back is a big deal. But for somebody who lives in, in a rural community where you may live 50 or 75 miles from a post office box that you share with a bunch of other families because they're hard to come by, then that's a whole different story. It's the biggest voting rights decision in nearly a decade. And it's the first time Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act has been tested at the high court. Its impact could reverberate across the country. Lawmakers in at least 48 states are considering more than 380 proposed bills that would make it harder to vote. This ruling into Supreme Court's term. It's the first all virtual term in the court's history. Justice is hearing 58 arguments via telephone over eight months. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. 
Let's take a look outside with live cam this afternoon. Plenty of clouds out there. Still something we've seen a lot this week. But Katie Blake, are we going to see some rain from these clouds today? Today and into tomorrow, we're going to see our rain chances drop down a bit. Not going to be as high as what we've seen previously this week. But just because rain chances drop off, that doesn't mean our temperatures are going to shoot back up. It'll still be warm out there, but we're not looking at big time summertime heat over the next couple of days because we're still going to keep these clouds around uh, and they help to kind of limit our temperatures just a little bit. Here's what's going on at the airport currently 86 mostly cloudy, but we're going to see a mix of sun and clouds for the rest of the afternoon. Our dew point is high. It's in the low 70s, so that's making it feel hotter than the actual air temperature feeling like 93, but winds finally starting to increase a bit. They've been really light so far today. Now they're about five to 10 miles per hour and that's where they'll, they'll stay for the rest of the afternoon. So for the rest of your Thursday here, we'll see our temperatures jump into the low 90s right around 92 feeling like mid to upper 90s this afternoon and a 10% chance of a pop up shower or storm again compared to what we've seen the last few days. Coverage of rain this afternoon not going to be quite as high, but that will be changing as we get into the holiday weekend. Elsewhere across South Central Texas, 87 in Beeville, also 87 in Del Rio. We've got a nice mix of sunshine and clouds out there. Again, that'll continue for the rest of the day. We are starting to see a few showers pop up down a little bit closer to the Gulf Coast at this time, closer to places like Beeville, just south of Beeville, Beeville there, uh, and a little bit closer to San Antonio, mainly in Atascosa County, south of Pleasanton. A few little showers trying to get going there. So again, a lull in rain chances today and tomorrow, but those thunder showers pick back up as we head into the upcoming holiday day weekend. We'll talk more about that and get you an update on what's going on in the tropics coming up a bit later in the newscast guys. Thank you very much, Katie. This noon, San Antonio police are working on a couple of open cases and they need your help to solve them. First, police are looking for a driver who they say hit a man and then left him for dead on a northwest side street. Officers don't have a lot to go on, but they think this is what the suspect's vehicle look like. Looks like they say back on June 4th, he was driving a maroon 2015 Toyota Avalon near Hebner and Babcock roads. Police say he ran a red light and ended up hitting a man who was riding a bicycle in the area. Then the driver took off and did not try to help the victim. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. And police want to track down this man as well. Officers say, actually this woman as well. Officers say that she robbed a 23-year-old man at a family dollar in the 400 block of South WW White Road. Then she ran off. If you have information on either of these cases, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You could be eligible for a cash reward if you provide information that leads to an arrest. And still ahead, it's a popular spot for Texans looking to get away, and this 4th of July weekend will be no different in Port Arantis, how the city is preparing for weekend crowds. But if you're staying a little closer to home, we have a look at some of the big firework shows you can enjoy. That's coming up later in the show. Rescue operations here in Surfside halted. I'm Morgan Norwood, and I'll explain why coming up. President Biden and the First Lady are in Surfside, Florida today, seeing the site of that collapsed condo building firsthand. Meanwhile, we are learning the death toll is now up to 18. ABC's Morgan Norwood reports from Florida. Exactly one week after the deadly collapse in Surfside, President Joe Biden and the First Lady arriving in Florida, meeting first with local leaders and thanking the rescuers for their round-the-clock operation. The president's visit comes as the death toll climbs, more bodies pulled from the rubble. It is also with great sorrow, real pain, that I have to share with you that two of these were children aged four and ten. The two identified as Lucia and her younger sister Emma, their father Marcus Guara, identified earlier. Their mom Anna also died in the collapse. Search operations halted due to stability concerns. The stop in operations was based on the subject matter experts of several on-site structural engineers. Concern assessors included six to 12 inches of movement in a large column hanging from the structure that could fall and cause damage to the support columns in the subterranean garage area. This video shot by Adriana Sarmiento just seven minutes before the collapse, capturing water gushing into the garage below the building, as well as debris on the ground. Weight builds up as you come down the tower. So those columns on the first floor 
are essentially supporting the entire tower. And this haunting voicemail recorded the moment Risa Rodriguez saw the crumbled building. Oh my God! Oh my God! Yanni! The whole entire building is gone. Engineers are now working with officials to determine when that search can pick back up again. So far, no timeline on when that can resume. Meanwhile, another painstaking turn in this difficult search. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Miami Beach, Florida. Let's take another look outside with live cam. It is July 1st and it is not feeling like it in South Texas and I am totally okay with that. You know, <laughs> this view could easily just be full sunshine and we could be really starting to turn up the heat this time of year. But I don't have to tell you this with these showers that have been around this week, even into last weekend. I'm really liking this weather. I went home yesterday afternoon and I didn't immediately break into a sweat. So <laughs> nice change of pace yeah. here. Yes, as we head into July 86 now at the airport, starting to pull in a bit of a breeze. Winds have been pretty light so far today. So coming up, we'll talk about a dip in rain chances today and tomorrow. Rain chances do pick up again as we get into the 4th of July weekend. And we've got a new tropical storm out in the Atlantic Basin. We'll take a look at Elsa coming up next. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. Virgin Orbit is committing to doubling their launch rate in 2022. CEO Dan Hart saying the company focused on ramping up and expanding their operations globally. This after a successful satellite launch on Wednesday. The company sent a 70-foot rocket that deployed seven satellites into orbit, including ones for the U.S. Defense Department and the Royal Netherlands Air Force. Meanwhile, Instagram is going to begin testing changes to make their app look a little bit more like TikTok. Facebook's head of Instagram, Adam Mazzari, saying that the app plans to start showing users full screen recommended videos in their feeds. Missouri specified that TikTok and YouTube are reasons for the changes and cites them as serious competitors. Users will begin seeing changes on the app over the coming months. And Twitter giving out 140 NFTs featuring seven different designs. The NFT is going to be available on the NFT marketplace Rarible. The social media giant handing out the NFTs directly to people who reply to an original tweet announcing the giveaway. Twitter now joins the many brands, celebrities, and companies Companies that are minting and auctioning off NFTs. And that's your Cheddar News Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. All right, a lot of people looking forward to the holiday weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing some people may be getting that weekend started a right. little bit early <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to I take advantage. I think there's some of that. <laughs> I, I think there's some of that happening. Today feels like a Friday, but it's not. But it's not. No, no. You know? Not quite yet. Not I've been one day ahead all week. Yeah, it's good. It's, I'll blame the fourth. And we don't, do we know even what time of year it is? I walked outside yesterday <laughs> afternoon and I'm like, what is going on? There were clouds around. It wasn't crazy hot, so mm -hmm. real nice, real nice. Uh, before we get into our holiday weekend forecast, I want to take a look at what's going on out in the tropics. We had a new tropical storm develop late last night, very early this morning. You're going to hear a lot about this one. This is Tropical Storm Elsa, the earliest e-named storm on record. So this is early into hurricane season here. Elsa still out in the open Atlantic, but it is making a beeline off to the west at about 25 miles per hour through the weekend. Saturday morning, it's into the central Caribbean south of the Dominican Republic, and then a northeasterly turn is expected Sunday into Monday next week, bringing some rain to Cuba as a tropical storm by early on Monday. And then the tail end of the forecast cone here five days out does bring Elsa into a portion uh, or the tail end of the forecast cone, I should say, into uh, South Miami, uh, South Miami, South Florida. They are in the cone here. Uh, but keep in mind the center of circulation of Elsa five days out could be anywhere here from the east coast of Florida all the way out into the central Gulf. That's what this cone represents. So this is something that South and Central Florida will be watching closely over the course of the weekend. We do not expect Elsa to have any impacts on our portion of the Gulf Coast. Meanwhile, here at home, 86, reading mostly cloudy, 
but as you can see on our camera shot here, plenty of sunshine peeking through those fair weather clouds. 93 is our heat index, so the yellow number here is what it feels like when you factor in the humidity. These numbers won't get too crazy today. A few spots certainly could touch 100 degrees, uh, but with these clouds around and even a few pop up showers, that's going to limit our temperatures from rising too much, and uh, that's going to help to keep those heat indices out of dangerous territory this afternoon. Winds have been fairly light today. We've still got a calm wind anywhere you see the CM. That's a calm wind, so from Gonzales down to Beeville all the way over to Carrizo Springs, but everyone will see a wind about 5 to 10 miles per hour settle in nicely this afternoon. Again, some fair weather clouds out there. A few of these clouds, especially as you work down closer to the Gulf Coast, are trying to produce a little bit of rain. We've got some showers south of Beeville uh, over near Victoria and then mainly closer to the water. There are also a few little showers in southern Atascosa County and compared to the past couple of days, we're just not going to see as much activity on radar as we head into the afternoon. Doesn't mean there's a 0% shot at you see in a little shower, uh, but it's not going to be as widespread as what we've seen the past couple of days. So nonetheless, a stray shower will be possible through this afternoon. Any activity winding down after sunset, things will be pretty quiet through the start of the day on Friday and similar to today. Tomorrow, our rainfall coverage will be right around 10%. A lot of the rainfall activity tomorrow is going to be up in a portion of central Texas. Now that will start to change as we get into the holiday weekend. Some rain making energy. These pieces of orange and red here will start to move down closer to our part of Texas this weekend, and that'll continue through the early and middle part of next week. So that's why rain chances today and tomorrow are on the lower side, but they'll jump back up to a chance of some scattered showers and non severe storms this weekend and into a good portion of next week. So a little low in the rainfall, but don't let that fool you. As we get into the weekend, we will be watching for some of those uh, non severe storms that will be around over uh, the holiday weekend and even into early next week. As for your Thursday, high around 92, low chance of a stray shower here or there. But then look what happens this weekend 40% chance of some showers showers and non severe storm Saturday and again on the 4th of July for Sunday and then scattered afternoon downpours stay in the forecast through the middle part of next week. This is just not necessarily a typical forecast for us this time of year and uh, we're extra grateful for it because the rain chances help to keep those temperatures down a bit guys. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks Katie. Mm -hmm. The holiday weekend will draw people out to a lot of the main attractions, Texas beaches included. So after the break, Stephen Cavazos has some tips if you are planning a trip down to the coast. Coming up. Summer is in full swing and the city of Port Aransas is ready to see a wave of people heading to the beach this 4th of July weekend. Business has been booming and local leaders there hope to see that trend continue. Stephen Cavasso shows us how the seaside community is preparing for its busiest time of the year. Crowds are set to make their way down to the coast for some fun in the sun. For Port Aransas, the upcoming 4th of July weekend is expected to be jam-packed. The celebration begins as really now. Uh, today, a lot of folks are coming into Port A. They'll be coming in all through the, the weekend. Brett Stawar is the CEO and president of the Port Aransas Tourism Bureau and Chamber of Commerce. He tells us this past Memorial Day was record-setting when it came to the number of tourists. And when it comes to this holiday weekend... Uh, we anticipate July 4th to be one as well. Staywar says for a better experience, plan ahead. Check with restaurants and hotels for reservations and prepare for traffic to be anything but beachy. You know, don't wait till midday or something just to travel over. You'll hit some traffic on the, the bridge and the causeway coming into the island. Staywar says there will still be plenty to do. A lot of people come down with families and friends and fish for the fourth. Um, we also have a lot of cruises, so a lot of the in fact, firework cruises are being offered. With he says after a dark year, it's time to get back in the sun. Well, people are loving the beach, coming out and enjoying it. Sewar does say that local law enforcement will be out patrolling the area this weekend, so be sure to follow the rules of the beach. Now, as for the road, if you plan on packing your bags for the coast this weekend, it's encouraged to leave early enough so you avoid those long delays. But most importantly, be sure to have fun and be safe. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. And a reminder that San Antonio is bringing back its celebration this year. The free event is taking place from 11 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. at Woodlawn Lake Park on the 4th. The Parks Foundation said local food trucks and vendors will be selling barbecue, burgers, hot dogs, tacos, all the good stuff. There will also be carnival games available throughout the celebration. The fireworks display starts at 9 this Sunday, July 4th.
And that's not the only patriotic display you can catch on the 4th. Several suburbs and parks in our area are holding their own celebrations, and we have a list on our website. Just go to ksat.com. A popular pick to pick a popular spot to pick up some fireworks is Alamo Fireworks. RJ Marquez tells us how the huge warehouse on the far east side is getting ready for the weekend rush. That's right, guys. The 4th of July holiday is right around the corner. And of course, there's a lot of excitement this year because maybe last year some people just decided to stay home because of the pandemic. And this morning we visited Alamo Fireworks Warehouse. It is the largest indoor fireworks warehouse in the state of Texas. We checked out all of the different varieties of fireworks they have here. They have hundreds of them, all sorts of different prices. So they're gearing up for what's going to be a very busy weekend and a couple of days ahead. But we also want to mention that they are also taking safety into consideration. Here's what Chelsea Bodie had to say about being safe this holiday if you are planning to set off some fireworks. To make sure there is a responsible adult around at all times, always be on a flat, stable surface, launching your fireworks away from people, pets, buildings, and just being courteous and respectful of your space and your surroundings. This year, people are free, and so fireworks are still the perfect outlet. They want to come celebrate that independence more than ever. So there's a lot of hustle and bustle out here, and we're really excited about it. And we also want to mention that fireworks are banned within San Antonio city limits, and you also need to stay 100 feet away if you are going to set off fireworks, stay 100 feet away from any buildings or structures. But we are back for of July weekend right around the corner. Make sure you guys stay safe and have a great holiday. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Nearly 48 million Americans are expected to travel over the holiday weekend, but issues affecting several industries could put a damper on things as the holiday gets underway. What to keep in mind coming up in the next half hour. And it's the largest fine Wall Street regulators have ever given a company $70 million. And some of that money will go to customers. Why an app used for trading stocks is facing that hefty fine. Bill Cosby is a free man. The 83-year-old comedian was let out of prison after Pennsylvania's Supreme Court overturned his sexual assault conviction. As Rena Roy reports, the actor spoke to ABC News by phone after his release. A stunning reversal of fortune for Bill Cosby, now spending his first full day as a free man, with Pennsylvania's highest court overturning his sexual assault conviction after an appeal. The 83-year-old comedian speaking to ABC News by phone just hours after his release from prison Wednesday. And nobody had the sense to say, wait one second, this doesn't match up with the truth. This is not what I was taught in college. This is not what I was taught at home, et cetera, et cetera. Cosby has always maintained his innocence, releasing a statement denying any wrongdoing, thanking fans, supporters, and friends. What we saw today was just... But his accusers, like Heidi Thomas, are outraged. We know he's guilty. The justices that have made this decision have just enabled a criminal to go without a consequence. Thomas was one of six witnesses who testified against Cosby during his 2018 retrial when he was found guilty of drugging and sexually assaulting former Temple University employee Andrea Constand. But Pennsylvania Supreme Court justices reversed that decision Wednesday because of a verbal agreement his attorneys made with a former prosecutor that he would not be criminally charged if he agreed to testify in a 2005 civil lawsuit brought by Constand. The court says Cosby cannot be retried on the same charges. This opinion says nothing about his innocence. There is no judgment from the court here about whether the allegations are true or false, etc. It is only about this question about what the initial prosecutor had promised. Constan releasing a statement calling this decision disappointing, saying it may discourage those who seek justice for sexual assault in the criminal justice system. Others are celebrating Cosby's release, including his former co-star Felicia Rashad, who said a miscarriage of justice has been corrected. In New York, Rena Roy, ABC News. The Trump Organization Chief Financial Officer Alan Weisselberg surrendered to authorities ahead of expected charges against him and former President Donald Trump's company. Weisselberg was seen walking into the courthouse in lower Manhattan this morning with his attorney. 
New York prosecutors are expected to announce the first criminal indictment in a two-year investigation into Trump's business practices. Details about the grand jury charges haven't been unsealed yet. They're expected to center around benefits from the real estate company he extended to his family. Those include payments for cars, rent, tuition, and medical bills. Today, the U.S. House of Representatives approved a $715 billion infrastructure bill. The Invest in America Act is in, focused on improving roads, bridges, transit and rail, and ensuring clean drinking water. House Democrats hope the bill can be used as a framework to start negotiations with the Senate and the White House. President Biden and a bipartisan group of senators reached a deal last week on top line priorities, but many of the other details are still unclear. This bill does not address how the new legislation would be funded. Let's take another look outside with live cam. A nice picture out there, nice temperatures. And I gotta say, guys, it's nice to be with you all here today. Samuel King on the anchor desk. Yes. First time at KSAT. Right, yes. right. Good to be here on the main side. Katie Blake, <laughs> I don't get to hang out with you enough. I, I love it. So Samuel and I sit right next to each other, and he mm -hmm. was asking me earlier, like around 11 o'clock, he was like, so is it going to be hot out today? And I was like, ah, oh, you know, not too bad because we have the clouds. And, um, and I was like, why do you have a story outside? And he was like, no, for, for the show when we talk to each other. And I was like, what? <laughs> Very exciting. Yes, uh, good to see you guys today. Um, here is a little bit of good news. If you'll remember yesterday's mold count, it was very high. Today, it has come down into the high category. So we're seeing a little bit of improvement. Uh, and with the rain comes higher counts of mold. Uh, we should see that mold number maybe continue to fall a little bit over the next couple of days as rain chances hit a bit of a lull toward the end of the work week. We've got a nice amount of some fair weather cloud cover out there this afternoon. Radar not as colorful as it's been the past couple of days. Nonetheless, a few stray showers will be possible into the afternoon, especially south and east of San Antonio. Temperatures below 90 with the exception of Victoria. Everyone else still below 90 for the time being. I do expect we'll see highs jump into the low to mid 90s for most of us. A few spots off to the west like Del Rio down to Catula may jump into the mid to upper 90s this afternoon. Upper 80s there in the hill country. East southeast winds 5 to 10 miles per hour and again a 10% chance of a stray afternoon shower today. That will be true Friday as well. But rain chances pick back up as we head into the upcoming holiday weekend. 40% chance of some showers and non severe thunderstorms both Saturday and into Sunday. If you're under one of these thunder showers, you could pick up a quick one to two inches of rain. But I want to reiterate no severe weather as we head into Saturday and then the holiday on Sunday. We'll talk more about this forecast and get you an update on what's going on in the tropics coming up in just a bit, guys. Thanks very much, Katie. It's summer now, but back to school season will be here in no time. And Tiffany Huertas tells us why parents need to act quickly if they want their children fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Summer is in full swing, but top U.S. health officials say parents need to be thinking about the school year now. My message is really clear. You should get your kids vaccinated. Right now, the two-dose Pfizer vaccine is the only one authorized by the FDA for children as young as 12. That means it would take five weeks from the first dose to be fully vaccinated, which puts us into August, when some schools across the country begin to welcome students back. For parents who may be wavering on whether to get their 12 and older child vaccinated. The safety uh, profile on these vaccines are really quite extraordinary and they're much, much safer uh, than getting COVID. Since late May, the pace of vaccinations, especially among those 12 and 15, has drastically slowed. While the worrying Delta variant has now spread to almost every state, now accounting for one in four coronavirus cases nationwide, according to the latest CDC estimates, fueling concerns about potential case spikes in the fall. The Pfizer vaccine has shown to be 88% effective against symptomatic infections caused by COVID-19. Uh, we've got to really ramp up our vaccination, especially with Delta variants spreading much more widely across the country. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And the FDA did add a warning to both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. It says there are rare and treatable heart conditions associated with the vaccines in adolescents and young adults. CDC advisors say almost all the cases resolved with little treatment and patients recovered quickly. And the advisor said that the benefits of vaccination outweigh the risks. 
Heads up if you still have airline credits from canceled trips during the pandemic that may be about to expire. Why two senators are now asking the Department of Transportation to intervene. And a stock trading app dealt a pricey blow, a $70 million fine. Why it's accused of misleading customers. And speaking of stocks, a popular stock trading app is dealing with a $70 million fine, and some of that money will go to customers. Wall Street regulators accused the Robinhood app of systemic supervisory failures and of misleading customers. The regulators focused on the large-scale system outages in the app back in March of 2020 and its options trading procedures. As part of the fine, Robinhood must pay more than $12.5 million in restitution and interest to thousands of affected customers. Robinhood says it's working on improving the platform's stability, among other issues. Huge backlogs and broken printers, just some of the issues a watchdog group says it discovered at the Internal Revenue Service. According to a report, the IRS still had more than 35 million tax returns to process at the end of this year's filing season. That's a backlog four times bigger than at the end of the 2019 filing season. The report found a lack of working printers is also to blame for that backlog. As of March, about 42% of the printers and copiers used for IRS processing were broken. The report is from the Taxpayer Advocate Service, an independent organization within the IRS. The IRS says it's working to address these issues. Two senators want the U.S. Department of Transportation to look into whether it's fair for airlines to allow credits issued during the pandemic to expire. The request came from Democratic Senators Ed Markey and Richard Blumenthal. Existing rules give airlines a lot of leeway on the issue. They're only required to issue refunds if they cancel flights. When passengers cancel them, they are allowed to issue refunds or credits. And many airlines opt for credits that expire after a certain time. The DOT has received more than 100,000 refund complaints from passengers since the pandemic started. Millions of Americans have trips planned for mm -hmm. the holiday weekend. However, 4th of July plans could take a hit because of gas prices, fuel distribution issues, and rental car shortages. David Sears has the outlook on travel this weekend. Congested roads, crowded airports. Americans have had pent up demand. They are ready to get out and they are traveling in high numbers. AAA expects nearly 48 million Americans to travel this holiday, most trips by car. And those prices at the pump just keep going up. A gallon of regular, the highest we've seen in nearly seven years, with no relief in sight. Crude oil continues to increase, and with that accounting for more than 50% of the price of the pump, as it goes up, so does the price you pay. And AAA says there could be some gas outages across the country. It's not a supply issue, rather a delay in gas deliveries. Thanks to a shortage of fuel truck drivers, AAA isn't seeing or expecting market-wide gas outages, though. But the good news is it's being refueled within 12 to 48 hours, um, and it's happening sporadically across the country. If you're having trouble getting a rental car or finding they're more expensive, there's a reason for that. A chip shortage that affected the automotive industry caused a lack of production and tighter inventory, which trickled over to the rental car industry as well. It is really in your best interest to plan and make reservations for everything at once. So flights, hotels, car rentals, um, tickets to any major events and attractions you want to go to. David Sears, KSA 12 News. Thank Even still, the beach looks nice. Right. <laughs> it still lot, looks like a good place to right. be. <laughs> and a lot of people taking off maybe a little early. Hopefully they're going to stick with us here through for our newscast. But Katie Blake, if people are heading out, how's the weather looking uh, this afternoon and the weekend? It is going to, you know, it's still going to be warm out there for sure. Uh, but the rain chances here locally are going to hit a bit of a lull over the next couple of days before they pick back up Saturday and then into the 4th of July on Sunday. And we'll talk more about our San Antonio forecast coming up. But I want to get you a look at what you can expect down on our Texas Gulf Coast beaches, Port A, Corpus Christi area. We're looking at low 90s Saturday, upper 80s on Sunday. Uh, rain chances will jump up a touchdown closer to the coast on Sunday. Thankfully, both days, rip current risk is low. A couple weekends ago, it was high, but rip current risk uh, heading into this holiday weekend is low. So some good news there. More on our local forecast for the 4th of July coming up short.
As we head towards the fourth, of course, we want to know if this break in the heat is going to last, but we got some a storm, mm -hmm. yeah. a very specially named storm. <laughs> cue the internet, cue the memes Adam, in the tropics. Adam Kasky had a conniption fit when he found out this was the next name on the list. Yeah, yeah. you know, he let us yeah. all know at six o'clock yes. yesterday. He is not thrilled. And he's not letting it go. Either. <laughs> No, he's not. See, a lot of that. Um, a lot of that over not the next holding couple of days. It back anymore. <laughs> nope. Um, Elsa. Yes, that is the name. And we Anna was the first name this year. Elsa is the e name. Take it. That we don't pick the names. <laughs> the list is given to us, and we work with what we got. But yes, we have Tropical Storm Elsa in the Atlantic. It's that. Uh, center of convection there right in the center of your screen as of the 10 uh, 1 p.m. update so new information here winds still 45 miles per hour it is uh, moving off to the west northwest at 28 miles per hour which is fairly quick for a tropical system so by early tomorrow this will be starting to work into the Caribbean uh, crossing over the windward and leeward islands by Saturday morning in the central Caribbean south of the Dominican Republic still is a tropical storm by early Monday Monday, working over a portion of Cuba and then by late Monday into Tuesday, potentially getting close to South Florida. There are the Florida Keys right there. Keep in mind, though, with this forecast cone, I always like to say this just as a reminder, this forecast cone indicates that the center of circulation could be all the way over here, closer to the central Gulf or as far east as the east coast of Florida. So a lot of room here uh, as we get into early next week. And this is something that the state of Florida will be watching very closely. And of course, we'll keep you updated. You may have vacation plans there, uh, friends or family as well. So we'll keep you updated on Elsa here at home. Rain chances pick back up as we get into Saturday and then Sunday for the holiday weekend. Each day is not going to be a washout, but we will have more of those pop up showers and non severe storms around as we get into the weekend. As for today, radar is not as going to be as busy as it's been the past couple of days. We do have a couple of showers uh, down closer to Highway 77 there, closer to the Gulf Coast from Beeville, Goliad, Victoria, and then points southeast. A couple of little showers right off to the west of Carn City, north of Campbellton there, and well south of Pleasanton. A couple of little showers trying to grow and develop. They're going to have uh, kind of a hard time today, and overall rainfall coverage will be lower today than it's been previously this week. We've got an area of uh, upper level high pressure that's kind of centered over North Texas. This is a fairly weak high pressure system, so even underneath it, you can get a few little showers going, but it does help to suppress shower and thunderstorm activity, and that's what we'll see today and into the day on Friday. But as we get into the holiday weekend, that upper level high is going to be pushed down off to the southwest. It's going to re weaken a lot, and that's going to allow for some rain making energy to start to drop back into south central Texas. That's these blobs of orange and red that you see right here, and we're really going to have a lot of this uh, with us next week, early to middle part of next week. So here's how things look on Futurecast. As we get into tomorrow afternoon, I do expect some thunderstorm activity, mainly in central Texas. A few folks in the hill country could see some showers tomorrow. As we get into Saturday, starting to see some more scattered activity around the area for the start of the holiday weekend and into Sunday, more scattered showers and storms will be possible. I want to reiterate each day is not going to be a total washout, but we'll have some scattered downpours around. Quick one to two inches of rain is possible if you find yourself underneath one of those downpours. And again, no severe weather expected. Just like earlier in the week, you may certainly see some some flashes of lightning or hear some rumbles of thunder, but we don't anticipate any organized thunderstorms, and so that cuts down on our concern for some severe weather. So you will want to keep an eye to the sky. If you've got outdoor plans this weekend, you hear some thunder, take things inside just to keep everyone safe. As for your Thursday, lower rain chances. I can't rule out a stray shower, but it's unlikely today and tomorrow. And then as we get into the weekend, scattered thunderstorms possible. Those chances will continue into the middle parts of next week. We'll be right back. Well, the advice that former uh, Spur got from, let me start that over. Well, the advice Coach Pop gave to former Spur Monty Williams about handling playoff pressure is paying off. Phoenix Suns head coach now leading his team to the NBA Finals. The Suns beat the Clippers 130-103 to 
winning the Western Conference Finals four games to two. The Clippers, of course, without another former Spur, Kawhi Leonard. Chris Paul leading all scores with 41 points, getting in the face there. He's heading to the finals for the first time in his 16-season career. The Suns last made the NBA Finals in 1993 when they were led by Charles Barkley. They, that team lost to Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls in six games. The Eastern Conference Series still unsettled. The Hawks and Bucks have two games apiece, and the Bucks are missing a major player, two-time MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo. He's listed as doubtful for tonight's Game 5. Atlanta's Trey Young is also uncertain, sitting out Game 4 with a bone bruise in his right foot. Meanwhile, Clint Capella also questionable with right eye inflammation after taking an elbow to the face in Game 4. So many injuries in the NBA this season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no injuries here, we hope. The 4th of July fun is starting a little early for SA Live. And that makes all the sense in the world, doesn't it? They are kicking off the celebration with games you can play in your backyard. Hi, Fiona and Jen. Hey there. Hi. That's right. It is time to get your game face on. And Mike Moody from Game CU joins us. And this is just a sampling, right? This is a little bit of what we have in store for you today. So this is Slingshot. Okay. It's, it's a new version of just try to try to get them all out of your quadrant. So I want them to disappear. Make the pucks go through. Come on, oh, come on Jenna. There we oh, go. Oh, yes. the You're not playing against anyone. You should be winning right now. There's I, no one against you. You know, the greatest opponent, my greatest opponent is Oh, oh. Okay, oh okay, so that's right shot. There. Okay, we this got close enough. This is one of enough. many games, though, right? This We're is just one of the fun here. backyard things. We have ladder golf, redneck golf, whatever you want to call Ooh. it. You know how you do it. You just throw it. And you get it to get it to catch there. Okay. Try to go in the middle one. The middle one's more points. Oh, there you oh, go. Like and the bottom one's good. Oh. Not bad. Oh, Went right. for the easy one on the top. Oh. And Fiona struck out. But good, that was a good attempt. That was and a good attempt. From the backyard to yes. video games. Yes. Do you have a favorite video game? Do you have one? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so let us know what your favorite video game to play is at SA Live Case Out on Facebook and Twitter. Oh, look at this incredible creation. It's a taste of summer sweets with fun designs from a new Braunfels bakery that has summer events for kids. Yes, and we are going to get to meet one of those bakers as well. Lots of great things coming up on SA Live.